It's a Mark 1 Audi TT and let's get the cluster out. So one of the first things we want to get out is uh, this side trim here. So trim tool and little wriggle. And then we've got these uh, torque screws. These ones here, we're going to take them out. Let's find a torque screwdriver. Let's have a guess, T25. Well, T27, too big. T25, correct. Right, let's make a start on getting these little babies out here. Right, so we should, with our trim tool, I should be able to release this forward here. It's just got to come forward that much because uh, we're going to be dropping uh, this panel out here. And uh, there's some more screws under here. Let me see if I can point them out to you nicely. Okay, so underneath here we have um, that screw to take out there. And we have that screw to take out there and that one hidden up down there. So let's get those out. Right, so we've, uh, we've got the screws out for this panel here. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull the uh, lever that adjusts the steering column. We're gonna drop it down and pull it forward. Oops, pull it forward as much as we can. And then we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be careful because the finish on this top cowling um, if you can see around here, that scratches really easily. So um, personally, I'll always put a microfiber over the cowling, like so. So when we do any wriggling, um, it doesn't scratch the cowling. And then we've got to um, get hold of this and just pull it forwards. And this side as well, I'm gonna pull that forward somehow with the camera balanced in front of my face. All right, so that pops down and that gives us enough clearance to get the uh, screws out, which are tucked under here, underneath, um, that little piece of um, vinyl. And this one there. So we're gonna take those out and uh, then we're gonna wriggle it forwards. We, uh, we have those two screws out. We have our microfiber on protecting the, uh, the top cowling. So now we just have the fiddly wriggly part of uh, getting the cluster out. Now there's also, um, we're gonna show you, under here, there's another clip, which uh, will become apparent what it's like when I get this out. So let's see if we can get this out. Right, so that's out of the clips. Now we've got to get the multi-plugs off. Okay, so we have the green multi-plug this side. It has uh, a little locking tab, which you have to push down. At the same time, you then pull off that pink lever. So there's the little release tab. And uh, there's the lever you have to pull over. We've got one on this side. And we've got another one on this side. So once we've got the multi-plugs off, there's uh, a piece of cable which is normally cable tied on, but this one hasn't got the, the cable ties on. So we have it out. There's uh, 
a third multi-plug on some of them, this grey one here. This also has to be taken out. So we've got the three multi-plugs out and the cluster is out. Right, so what we're doing today, we are replacing this processor. Um, got various faults with the cluster. Uh, we're gonna fit it up with a new screen and uh, write the software in and see if it works. So uh, it's very important to use um, a nice flux. Uh, this is a proper circuit board flux and uh, I'm not going to be able to do this on camera because one, I'm right-handed and I'm holding my camera with the right hand. Um, so I'm going to flux this up and show you what it's like when we've got some flux on it. Right, so as you can see, we've got some uh, nice amount of uh, good quality tacky flux. There's our old processor, she's dead. And uh, here is our new processor. And uh, ooh, can I do this on camera? No, I can't. I can drop it. But it doesn't matter if you drop it because all you've got to do is get it more or less in place. And then the uh, tricky bit is, with uh, a correct tool, is to line these legs up which I'm not going to be able to do holding the camera. Um, but I'm going to line that up and uh, going to see if I can get some shots of uh, how we drag solder them. Right, so off camera, what I've done, I've uh, tacked the processor on and just held it down just in the corners. Um, I'm now going to drag solder these. Uh, it's going to be really difficult with this uh, um, phone in the way to... Um, record it so um, this may not go very nicely because I'm normally right up close and I've also got the uh, fume extractor off because it just makes too much noise for the camera but uh, let's see if I can get this on film for you guys Right, that's not the best bit of drag soldering I've ever done. But we've got no bridges. And uh, we've got quite a good solder joint on there. So now what we've got to do is uh, repeat that operation. Just a bit heavy on that first one. That looks a bit better. So yeah, now we've got to repeat that operation on uh, all these four sides. No, oh, I can't do it with uh, my magnifier on. I'm just going to have to do it as best I can and clean it up when the when the camera's off. Right, that's not too bad. A little bit light on that end. If um, if you ever go out doing this, don't worry too much if you get solder bridges. You'll have to um, get used to flowing it out with a bit of flux and using solder wick if it's really bad. Right, last side to go. 
Uh, why did I think that was a good idea to do this on camera? Oh yo yo. Processor, right? There's the processor. Let's see if I can get this last one done. This last side. Yep, yeah, that's flown in there quite nicely. So, uh, what we now have to do, we have to uh, inspect all of these legs, make sure we've got no solder bridges, and make sure that we've got good contact on every pin. Now, I think, uh, just with a very quick look, um, this one, may not be attached so i'm just going to zoom in on that with my uh um i'm going to say microscope but i'm going to lie it's not it's a magnifying glass monocle that i use a jeweler's loop so we're going to check all of these there's no solder bridges i can see there so we're going to check all these then uh, to, to program it. i've actually got to lift a couple of these legs up and uh we'll show you how uh, how we get this programmed and uh see if it goes uh back into the car and works Right, so I've lifted up a couple of legs off this processor. Now I'm going to give you some idea of scale. Um, first thing to give you some scale is uh, going to be my finger coming in. So that's my fingernail. Ooh, dirty. Um, and probably to give you a better idea of scale, this is just a ballpoint pen which I'm um, touching there. So that's the size of the leg which has to be lifted very carefully. Uh, I'm now going to connect this up and uh, show you how we program them. Right, so there we have everything connected. All the legs are soldered on for a nice secure joint. So uh, all that's left to do is to um, write the processor back in. Right, so it has uh, detected that it's a, a blank MCU. So what we've got to do is write the chip into it. Right, so it's detected its flash. Um, we're going to OK it to start the flash programming. Ask us to select the version of software, which um, luckily is actually uh, printed on the chip version 855 it's like a hologram isn't it the old chip was the 3k 85k well known for going wrong so we're going to install version 855 so let's find version 855 um, there's two versions of 855 ah, right so let's have another look 855HCO8L. 855 is 855HL or ML. There's an HL on the end there. So we're going to go for HL. If it's the wrong one, then uh, we'll have to do it all over again. 855HL. The MCU is blank new. Yes, indeed. Right, that's gone right in, and uh, we're going to see what happens when it's finished. Okay, so there we have it. That's reflashed. Um, all we've got to do now is, uh, oh, the light's going. <laughs> all we've got to do now is uh, disassemble the connectors, solder the legs back down, um, clean off the residue of the flux, and uh, see what it looks like. Right, so we've uh, reassembled everything and uh, got our little test rig up. So first thing we're going to do is add some power and uh, switch the ignition on and see if this comes to life. 
Um, doesn't pick up very well on the camera, unfortunately, but that is all working. Um, I've just calibrated the needles and uh, we're going to use VAGCOM VCDS to run through a test. I'm going to hook up the VAGCOM and we are going to click on Output Tests. And uh, we're going to click Next to Begin and the first one is the needle sweep. So let's check the needles. These should um, sweep all the way round and uh, temperature, fuel gauge and temperature gauge stop in the middle and these stop around there somewhere and uh, the next part of the test the needles will now drop down it'll do the uh, cluster lamp test and then we get the gong test then we get the segment test make sure all the segments are there and then the lighting so you see that gradually get brighter and that is the end um, shame it doesn't pick up on the uh, on the video very well because that is a new screen and uh, yeah that does does pick up quite nicely it looks better in real life um, so let's get this reassembled and back in the car and uh, see if it's all working so there we have it all back together uh, refitting being reversal of removal as always didn't bother showing you that because if you got it to bits I'm sure you'll be able to put it back together again um, so let's see uh, let's see it in action and ignition on. Oh, she needs a battery. Um, there we have it. New screen all working. Um, it's at this point where I have to admit I've been really stupid. And I never actually videoed uh, the faults on it. But you'll just have to imagine it not having a working screen and uh, other faults with it. But anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please click the like and the subscribe buttons. Um, means a lot to me, so uh, I know that you like what I'm doing and I'll go and make some more videos for you. Um, if you need a new screen fitted, check us out at ecuconnection.co.uk. Um, I'll put a listing up for the uh, screen replacement because I don't think we actually have a screen replacement um, listing at the moment, so I'll get that one done. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one.